friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. And we're about to get into uh, part three of building that custom Rosa mandolin. And uh, we're going to be working on the sides in this video. But before we get to that, I just want to clarify a couple of things that's going on here. I mentioned that I'm going to take a break from working on instruments. And what I mean by that is I'm, I would like for you to hold off sending them to me for a while until future notice, probably through November. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be putting out weekly videos. I will still be trying to get out a weekly video. Um, I will still continue to work on the custom mandolin, uh, but I have so much work here on the farm. That's why I'm just trying to find a little bit more time to get some of this work done here on the farm. I, I mentioned I've got to work on that rental house. I definitely have to work up there a lot. I also want to get some lumber cut uh, So uh, with my new sawmill. But I also have to get some firewood cut. Well, cutting the lumber kind of does a little bit of both of those because I leave a lot of slabs and I can use that stuff for firewood. So kind of killing two birds with one stone there. And, and just to be perfectly honest with you, in the month of November, it's hunting season here. And I thought, man, you know, I deserve a little time off. So, I, you know, I'm going to take a little more time off this year than I normally do and maybe try a little bit more hunting and that kind of thing. Or at least try to enjoy myself. When I say hunting, for me, hunting is kind of sitting out in the woods just enjoying it. I, I don't care whether I, you know, shoot anything or not. It's just a lot of fun to sit out there and watch the deer run by and the squirrels and the rabbits and things. But we do have a lot of honored coyotes here. We do have a lot of uh, destructive hogs here. And so if I see those things, hammer's going down. <laughs> But anyway, uh, just thought I'd bring you up to date there. Hopefully that clarifies uh, the status. Uh, we're not going out of business or anything. We're just trying to, you know, reorganize some priorities. So here, let's get into uh, working on the sides on this mandolin. I hope you enjoy it. It's time now to work on these F-holes and make them perfect. Um, they're real close. I sawed them out with the saw and they're pretty close, but they need quite a bit of filing to get them smooth and to get them to the line. A drifter is only a poet with wings. He moves, but he can't learn to fly. Running in footsteps ahead of his time. With no one to hear if he cries With memories of your sweet love on the vine I thumb my way south in the rain Thinking of bridges I burned in my life Each bridge causes somebody pain But yesterday's apples are gone from the tree Sour grapes are gone from the vine Tomorrow a new life is starting for you While nothing is changing in mind A drifter is only a poet with wings He moves but he can't learn to fly Running in footsteps ahead of his time With no one to hear if he cries pretty close. I won't say it's perfect yet. I may tweak it a little bit more and there's fuzz around the inside that I have to knock off yet but you can see how much different it looks than this side. This side here has not been shaped. It's just rough cut out. We're going to do the same thing to this side. I'm not going to bother filming it because it just takes a lot of film. I have uh, cleaned up the inside of this now. There's no fuzzy stuff around the edges. I have uh, opened it up and got it all the way out past the, you know, you want to make sure you get rid of the lines because the lines are the inside of the hole. So you want to go all the way to the outside of the lines. You don't want these winding up too small because they don't let enough sound out. That's one of the keys to your volume and everything else. So you want to make sure that these are about the right size. And uh, I think I'm pretty close there. I'll probably continue to 
tweak them uh, as I look at them. I'll see maybe a spot that's not as perfectly round as I want or smooth, and I continue to tweak them for a day, a day or so. It is time to make the blocks that go inside the mandolin sides, and I have my four patterns here. I've got a block that's already cut to the right thickness, or, or thickness to the right thickness, and the grain, it's quarter sawed mahogany, and the grain is running this way, and I've got arrows on all these pieces showing which way I want the grain to run through the pieces. So, and I try to maximize every bit of it I can so I'm not wasting this good mahogany. And now we will just draw around them. With no one to hear it be cry. That looks good. Got them all traced out there, and now we will go cut those all out on the bandsaw. Okay, we're going to get started cutting this out. First thing we'll do is just cut around it as close as we can to make the block smaller. In dreams of yesterday, I wonder back to my little cabin door I stroll beside an old rock garden I saw familiar scenes once more I heard the organ softly playing the music came so sweet and low I heard Mother sweetly singing as off she did so long ago. She sang about the rock of ages. That did a nice job with it, and uh, we're going to take it over to the spindle sander now and clean these up a little bit. In our little cabin door She opened up a faded Bible Where the family records used to be I knew Now that I've got the blocks rough sanded, what I do is I come over and I just kind of fit them to the mold loosely just to see how they fit to the mold and I can see where I think they might need a little bit of tweaking or whatever. And right away, these two always block into each other, so we're gonna have to cut this back off quite a bit, but that's okay. But if I look at the block itself to the individual mold, it's pretty good. I need to cut it off of this side here, so we'll cut it off of this side here to shorten it. And the back plate back here is pretty good. It could use a little bit of tweaking, but not bad. And this one looks already looks pretty good. It may not need much at all. Maybe just a little bit off of the blunt side here. So I just work on one at a time. This one here needs the most work. I'm going to take it off of this. I'll go back over to the sander and we'll work on that. Someone call my name. I turned and saw a sweet old lady And it seemed I was a child again She gently put her arms around me And she kissed her little boy once more It probably needs just a little more curve in here in the middle and uh, the sander I have on there may not do it. I may have to go to a smaller sander for that. So I'll leave that one as it is for now. I'm gonna knock off a little bit of the, the blunt part of this, this block here just to make it fit the curve here just a little bit better. Yeah, that looks better. 
This is pretty good, but it needs a little bit right here. It's a little rough. So I'm going to take this on the belt sander. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but to be honest with you, I think the ends need just a little bit more curl, so I think I will go back there just a little bit more. I'm not going to film it. going to start making the sides for the mandolin. I've cut two pieces of wood, uh, very curly maple, hopefully you can see that. And uh, we are going to, uh, I've, I've cut them down to 1 and 7 16 inch wide. They're about 3 16 inch thick, which is too thick, and they're rough sawed. So we're going to thin them way down. And uh, we're going to feed them through my thickness sander, the homemade thickness sander. I put my little dust collector on here and I have a vacuum to it. It's going to get real noisy, so we'll shut the sound off and just run it through. I'm also putting on my dust mask. cut down or the two sides cut down to exactly what I want in terms of thickness. They're both really highly flamed, very nice looking pieces of wood. More than likely I'll only need one of these pieces to do, well, at least 90% of the sides. So uh, anyway, we're going to get started putting them together. I want to tell you that this setup seems incredibly awkward to me. I know it doesn't look like it should be awkward, but it is to me, and here's why. I'm used to having the vise and everything at the other end of the table. Well, I'm actually used to having this stuff to my right and the vise to my left. So it's backwards from the way I used to be in my other shop. And so it's just going to take a little getting used to this uh, for bending these sides. Still got a little more setup to do. I have to get my torch blowing through this pipe. You can see this pipe here, and this pipe, you know, will heat up, and we'll get some water to dip these sides in, and then we'll show you how we bend it around this pipe. Well, as I said, this setup is very awkward, and to prove that, I had a little thing of water sitting here, and I already dumped it out and put it everywhere, so I had to clean all that up. So it's just awkward. Um, I'm, I've struggled with the camera angle on this because it's just an awkward thing to do. There's so much activity going on on this that, uh, you know, you need to see this pipe, you need to see this frame where I'm going to be going, and of course the wood that I'll be bending. Hopefully I won't get in the way of the camera too much, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, I'm looking at the wood to see where I want my finest curls, which side I want in and which side I want out. This wood is so curly it doesn't make too much difference. I think this would look good going around the, the, the top of the mandolin, so I'm going to use this as my top. I'll be bending it around here, making it fit into this curve of this mold. So here we go. I'm going to dip it in this water first to get it good and wet. You don't have to do a lot there. You can tell your pipe is really hot when you put it on here and you, and you get instant steam. So I've got the flame blowing through there very, very low, as low as I can get it just about. And you're still getting quite a bit of steam. So we're, we're just about right there. We're gonna give it a shot. It's almost impossible to bend this tight curl without breaking a piece of wood or something. So we're just gonna give it a shot and see what happens. I have this piece of metal that I got out of a tin can, literally out of the side of a tin can. I just cut it out of a, like a Crisco can or something. And that's the secret to bending this wood without breaking it too much, is you're pulling down on the metal, not on the wood. 
That changed everything for me in terms of bending this wood. I hold onto the metal back here and I can pull down. Also lets me get right to the end of the wood where I couldn't do that before. And about the time it dries out, that's when you need to take it off of there. You can kind of tell because you'll hear it quit steaming and otherwise you're going to burn your wood pretty bad, which isn't terrible, but you just don't want to bend it a lot, burn it a lot. This is bending pretty well so far, knock on wood. It does feel awkward to me though because it is backwards from the way I've always done it all these years. You can see it's bending pretty well and that piece of metal is really the secret to it for me. Try to hold it till it dries out good, and that makes it hold the curve a little bit better. Uh, it's not holding it as well as I was hoping, so we'll keep going here and have to bend a little further around the wood. Some of the wood is cracking. Those, those curls like to crack when you start bending it this tight. And what I found the best thing to do with those is to, is to just go ahead and bend the wood leave these little cracks because there are a few little tiny cracks I don't know if you can see it right here or not there's a little crack but uh, anyway uh, then I I just clamp those together with some super glue and hold those cracks together they don't show up that way it works really good and that's about the only way you're going to get it without getting any cracks at all Yeah, I've kind of got a problem here the way I have it in my vise. I'm going to have to adjust this pipe this way because the vise is getting in the way. Okay, I've got the pipe adjusted over here a little bit further in the vise where I can get around it a little better. The problem that I've got right now is the end here is not keeping its bend, so I'm going to have to work on that end to get it to fit the mold a little bit better. I'm going to hold it a little bit longer, might even burn it a little bit, but I got to get it to dry out and keep that bend. That helped it some, and yeah, maybe scorched it just a tiny, tiny amount, but that doesn't really hurt anything. This part of the bin doesn't have to match the mold exactly, it just has to have the tendency to move the way the mold is oriented. And if once you get that, then you can make it fit the mold pretty good because the wood's thin enough to, and pliable enough to fit that bigger curve. Okay, you can start to see that we're getting close. I'm just going to work on this overall body just to, you know, it doesn't have to fit perfect, but the better it fits, the better I like it. Because it will conform to the mold, no problem. It's not too bad. What I'll do now is Put the inside of the mold in here and uh, have to shrink it up a little bit to get it in there to begin with. And I'll fold it around till I'm pretty happy with where it's at. And I think you can see that it really does fit pretty darn tight. It fits the mold really tight. That's a key thing to, you know, the body shape and everything, is getting this fit really tight to the mold. And of course the mold has to be very accurate. Up here it's a little bit loose, but I don't have any way to hold it right now, but I can make, my, I can make it conform to the mold up here with my fingers. So, but we we'll, shouldn't have any problem. Go make the next 
one of the next hardest parts, which would be this longer bottom curl here. This piece of wood is going to be long enough for that, so we'll work on that. Now on the lower, there's a little bit of a deceiving curl back right here. It, I mean, it doesn't just curl around like this. It, 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 curls, it curls this way, and then it curls this way, and then it slightly curls back. Just ever so slightly, right at the end. And that's a subtlety of the lower, and uh, I try to get that in there. It's uh, not easy, but we usually get it to, to match pretty good. Again, I'll just look and see if there's a side out that I want. I guess we'll just stay on the same side out. It looks good. And the first thing I'm going to do is put that little, try to put that little subtle curl in here. It's right on the very tip end, too, and that's what makes it hard to do. It's right on the tip end. It's always easier to cut them shorter than it is to uh, extend them out. So I always try to start off with a little extra length. Looks to me like about right in here. I could shorten it up a little bit more. It's still going to be long, it looks like. You know, as they say, if it was easy, monkeys could do it. And I never see monkeys doing this. This isn't necessary at all, but I also bevel the very corners of these to make them fit to a tight corner. Um, I just do that because I do. I don't know why exactly. It just makes them fit the mold really, really tight. And that's what I'm after right now, is just getting it to fit the mold real tight. And those are going to get cut off anyway when you put the decorative points on. So you don't have to do it. I just do it. Seems to make it fit the mold a little bit better for me. A lot of the molds are made where you can take them apart, and that's a handy thing, but I've never had a problem with getting my sides out of a mold. Um, I took a lot of time in making the mold really straight. I take a lot of time in making sure the sides are straight, and so whenever I'm done, I can just push my sides through. At least that's been the situation in all the other ones, so I'm expecting that in this case. We need to bend one more little short piece right here, and then one long curl right up to here. Still got enough left out of that piece of wood to bend this one sh short curl here, so we'll use the same piece of wood for that. A little more bent, a little more curl than it needs, but that's okay. It, it'll, they usually straighten out a little bit. I've marked where I want to cut it off, and I'll cut it off. Okay, we're going to bend this final piece and get it working here. Okay, this first piece goes around the head block, the neck block. I think we got her pretty close already. Yeah, I think so. So, we'll go cut her off and see how well she fits. It's all fitting pretty good. We'll just have to work fit the blocks in here a little bit better. We'll change the camera around and, and come back to that in a minute. Even though the sides fit the mold, when you get the blocks in here, that changes everything again. And you can see that that's pushing the side out away from the mold, and it's just not going to work. The little side piece here is fine, I think, but this block has to be cut way back and I'm just going to approximate where I want to cut it back so when I get over there to the sander it'll I'll know about what I want to do 
and uh, we'll see how that works. As you can see, that's far better, but um, it's still, uh, the block doesn't fit real good in here now, so I'm going to take off a little bit of the curl on this block to make it fit this curl a little better. So we'll do that. The, a little bit of the back, in other words, we need to come a little straighter here, not, so, not quite so curly. I think you can see now that I have that block and everything fitting just absolutely tight to the mold. It's just about as good as you'll ever get one to fit. We've got to work on this block now. And if you remember what I said, this one has that little subtle curl that curls back the other direction. And the block already has it built in. Now we'll see if we can get it all to match up to this. And it looks like this corner needs to come off a little bit. It's pretty darn close. I'm just trying to get that last little bit out of it. And uh, it's not easy, but we'll get it there. I believe we're going to call that good enough. And we're going to, you know, get the glue on it and get it clamped in here. I didn't check the tail block, but that generally isn't much of an issue. Just a little bit of tweaking on it. It doesn't take much to get it to fit those sides just right. It's pretty close already. As a matter of fact, it might be good enough. I don't really see a real problem with that. Maybe just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit right on this one side. Yeah, it looks airtight. So, all right. I think we're about ready to put all the glue on it and force her into spot. I decided to move everything back into my regular table. It's just easier to film in here more than any other reason. We're going to go ahead and get glue on this and uh, start putting her together. I like to work on a very flat table so I can keep the sides down touching the table. And this table is good and flat so that will work out real good. It's got a Formica top. Alright, on this I only put the glue on the one side because it's just kind of complicated. I want to get this up in here real good and tight before I get started. Alright, and then I really need to get glue on this other surface too though. starting to cook with gas now and uh, I'm going to put a little pad right there and we're going to put a large clamp on this just to hold it in place. It doesn't take that much pressure, it's just that it takes a big clamp to get across there. Okay, that's pretty good. And what I do with these kinds of clamp ups, glue ups, is I put little tiny wedges in here wherever it's not fitting tight and uh, that forces it together real good. And then we'll have to turn it over and check the other side when we get that far. Anyway that just makes it conform to the blocks real tight and that's what we want. All right, so we've got the one of the harder parts locked in there. Now we'll turn the setup around this way for my ease of work this way. I'm just making it sure that it's conforming well and that everything is going to work out real good here. Looks like it will. Okay, the next place we're going to glue up is this spot right here. And for the most part, I'm just going to put glue all over this thing. That's about all it really needs. Okay, now what we'll do is set this clamp in place. Assuming that we can, and I think we can. There we go. 
got to get it pretty level with the rest of the clamp, rest of the form. And then we start spreading it out, making sure that the sides are going to work out real good. Overall, it's looking pretty good. Okay, we still got a block up here to go yet. And hopefully it'll fit in there with the big block in the way. It might not. But if it doesn't, that just means we gotta trim a little bit off of this side here and we'll be fine. This block fits real good. I just wanted to loosen up the clamp just a little bit to get it in there and then we'll tighten the clamp back up. We'll get glue on this block and uh, put it in place. All right, you can see it's clamped up. It's real tight to the mold everywhere. Looks just as good as it could possibly look, I think. All right, I'm going to put a little clamp across here to pull this to this point. Um, I don't think I need one here, but I do need one here. So we're going to put one here. Sometimes these spring clamps work great for this, and sometimes they don't. Let's we'll see if this one does. I think it will. Yep, that's going to work real good. Perfect. Okay, now we have to work on the other side. The only problem is we got all this stuff in the way, so we can't just turn it straight over. We will have to... Uh, I'm going to go back, I'll put this in this vise and we'll readjust the camera so we can look at it. Maybe you can see that, uh, you know, there's some gaps and things around on this side. Um, that's the way it almost always works, so we're just going to force it back together from this side. I'm even going to put a little bit of glue in these places because I can. I believe that's good enough. We're just going to let her set and do its thing. Blah, blah.